We've been in Shanghai now for almost a week, visiting galleries almost every day. So it's very refreshing to just step out and be travelers and just see some of the city from a touristic standpoint. And of course, we had to come to the Bund. From the Contemporary Art Epicenter to the Tourist Epicenter of Shanghai, I'm standing here at the intersection of the Bund and Nanjing Road. The name the Bund came from a Hindi word, band, which means embankment. And along this, it was built as a natural protection for flooding to protect the buildings that were constructed during the British concession during the two world wars. It formerly housed banks, customs houses, trading offices. It's now home to several chic hotels and boutiques and office buildings, and it's probably the most popular tourist destination in all of Shanghai. Behind me, Pudong, is a place that it's hard to believe only 20 years ago was a low-rise village and a series of rice paddies. It's now home to the tallest building in Asia, the Shanghai World Financial Center. Is right there. The opening is the observation tower. As well as the famous, or in the minds of some, infamous Pearl TV Tower, which has become an emblem of the rapid growth of this city of 19 million people. Today it's very crowded. Despite the rain, we see tourists from all over the world and all over China have descended upon this walk right along the banks of the Huangpu River. If you have just a short period of time to spend in Shanghai, I definitely recommend just spending some time on the bun. I'm standing in a location which as uh, recently as three years ago was Shanghai Steel Mill Number 10. It is now, uh, I'd say, a rather luxe art gallery space. We're in a district in Shanghai called Red Town, which offers a interesting counterpoint to Moganshan Road's art center. Uh, the steel mill ceased operations in 2005, but rather uh, quickly, the Shanghai municipal government decided to invest in the renovation of the space specifically for the exhibition of contemporary art. And have made a very industrial chic space that is full of 10 galleries, but very large scale, 5,000 square feet or more, um, predominantly owned by Shanghai gallerists, but also Italian gallerists, Japanese gallerists, which shows this international intrigue in these new areas that something is really happening here and it'll be interesting in time to see how the development continues. So here at Red Bridge Gallery, which was the first gallery to move into the Red Town neighborhood after the steel mill closed, there is an exhibition of about 10 or 12 young artists. The exhibition is called Youth China. It's all paintings, and according to the director of the gallery, this represents uh, the up-and-coming elite of young Chinese artists. I think the, the quality of the work is sort of hit or miss. I think some of them do show considerable promise, certainly in terms of um, the conceptualization of the work. There's a lot of interesting ideas that we're seeing on these canvases, but I think uh, the quality of the execution is such that I think uh, some more progress needs to be made before they're ready for the marketplace, but that is something that the director here is quite plainly aware of, and he made it clear to us that he's actually making sure that these artists are not exposed to the international marketplace until they're ready. Most of the galleries we've seen so far have been very market-driven, very commercially oriented, um, and so it's, it's interesting and, and indeed refreshing to see someone who's actually putting those interests to the side and really focusing on nurturing young and emerging artists. You know, what strikes me walking through Red Town is, again, the, the level of investment by the government and by the society at large in creating venues to display visual art by emerging artists. And I have to confess to a feeling of, uh, of woe that there isn't the same degree of commitment to um, arts funding in the United States. Obviously, that's something we've all heard a thousand times. but. It really shows when you go abroad and, and travel to countries where the state really does invest in the arts and demonstrates a real commitment to that and puts the money behind that commitment. Um, you would just never see a space of this quality, of this size, in this certain this art district um, where clearly so much has been invested in creating a physical environment um, to really just maximize the, the impact of displaying art 
purely for the sake of young emerging artists. Uh, I can only wish that something like that could happen back at home, and um, you know, maybe someday it will, but for now, it's, uh, it, it's, it's quite an eye-opener.